Down to Watch strives to be a unique podcast dedicated to movies, TV, and music with a soft spot for cult classics. Join your hosts, K and D, for fun, games, and the occasional pop culture chat. This is Down to Watch. Hello and welcome to episode 13 of Down to Watch, where we talk about classic TV, movies, and music. This week, we are starting out on a journey to explore Ryan Gosling and his works. I thought we were doing a podcast about Remember the Titans. Ryan Gosling is in the movie Remember the Titans, which is why oh. this movie is on of our course, radar. Number 12. <laughs> In case you haven't don't recognize that voice, that is D, and he's joined us after a long hiatus. Joined us after a long hiatus. He's been away for quite a few episodes. Um, life yeah, gets in the way. Yeah. Life gets in the way, kids, and it just happens. We try to truck along. We've also been on hiatus, basically, <laughs> the whole podcast in general. But we're back. And I have news for you. You want to get closer to the microphone? I have news for you. Okay. Are we for me? Or yeah, for the world. Okay. And you. You need to you world. need to be on this mic, friend. Otherwise, nobody you can't hear you. I have news for you, okay. world. Okay. I have news for you, Kay. Okay. <laughs> I have a game called "100 Reasons Why Eva Mendez Should Love Me," but we'll play that later. <laughs> <laughs> so D is jumping the gun a little bit. We haven't gotten into um, any of that just yet. Um, no disrespect. It's just a meme. No, it's okay. That's fine. Whatever. I don't care. Um, so yeah. So basically, you know, um, Brian Gosling has a pretty hearty filmography, and a lot of his movies I do enjoy. Some of them not so much, and I just thought it'd be fun to uh, visit those and just kind of you know pick them apart, see what's up, and also um, kind of uh, what do we what how you say evaluate Ryan's performance in each film as well oh, okay. as the film. Um, and, I, and I guess this is news to D also, I but know you know, doing a Ryan Gosling podcast. But yeah, it's okay. I'm, I am okay with that. <laughs> I am Lars and the Real Girl. Okay, but you knew end. that I was doing this. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You just didn't know this it's one not was. Your fault. <laughs> We're in the situation. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's mine. fine. Um, yeah. Okay, so you know, besides you know, internet memes and all that media hoopla and whatnot, Ryan Gosling is you know one of the great greater actors of our generation and i think it's time to go ahead and just give him some props and our film today is going to be remember the titans and there will be spoilers in case you haven't seen it but um you know i mean it's been like 15 years since the movie's been out so i don't i feel like it doesn't matter at this point so but before we get into all that we're going to start off with a newer segment called nerdy news (laughs) And um, what do I have today? I tried to find some news about Ryan Gosling, but he is like, since he had his baby, since Eva had his baby, he's been staying out of the way, which is awesome. You know, good on him. Like, he's taking time to take care of his business. But I, he has a book. It's not his book. I mean, it's his. It's a book about him. We're going to get into that. You're like really spoiling the surprise here. Yeah. So nerdy news. Um, the one thing, I, piece of information I have been able to find about Ryan as of late and it's like the newest things in, in the past like three months or something is that he is going to voice a character on grand theft auto 6 video game which there's rumors about it. i'm not sure how for certain it is but i think that's pretty interesting that could be fun i think they might be trying to put that to to theme it like the movie drive maybe but i feel like the 80s one was almost like that anyway but yeah so, I mean, that's cool. If that's what he wants to do, it'll be like, I wonder if it'll just get like a bunch of different women interested to play people who, women who have never, ever picked up a video control, video game controller. And now they'll, they'll want to play Grand Theft Auto 6 because Ryan Gosling is voicing a character. Oh, that's, that would be some brilliant cross marketing. Truth. Okay, so that's all the Ryan news. Um, But in other nerdy news, I also noticed that the new cast, the all-female cast of the new Ghostbusters film, including Kristen Wiig, uh, Melissa McCarthy, um, Kate McKinnon, and Leslie Jones, they're filming in Boston right now. And um, I guess in the Children's Hospital in Boston, some of the patients there, they have posted up a sign asking who you gonna call like in the window 
Oh, cool. And in response to that, these ladies went all dressed up in their Ghostbusters gear oh, cool. and went to visit these children, oh. which was super sweet. And, you know, they didn't have to do that. But apparently, and I didn't get into that because I didn't, I didn't get into this part of it because I really didn't want to. But apparently there were some Internet trolls that had some problems with that. Hold on. I want to go to the happy place. How excited was Melissa McCarthy there? Yes, all four of them were there. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> and there's some photos of of the kids with them and everything, and it's you know it's just it Which was really those sweet. Kids were screaming their heads off. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. Like, I would be screaming. Like, like what a lovely spot of sunshine and like an otherwise bleak you know existence. They crossed like, the portraits. streams. <laughs> <laughs> they crossed the streams of sunshine and happiness. And brought them into the to lives the into the children. Yes. yes. So good on you, ladies. Thank yes. you for that. Thank you for Very bringing. Classy. And screw those trolls. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just angry about life. But you want to? People didn't like it. Is what you're trying to say? Yeah, but I didn't really dig too deep. Other, I didn't go too far further past that. Then you know, people didn't like it. It's like I don't care why. what they expect. They wanted. Isn't I think there's people Dan still. Aykroyd? And who else? I, I can't even remember. I think there's the, still the Wilson guy. He was awesome. What are you talking about? The guy we see all the time. Oh, Ernie Hudson? Yes. I think that there's just dudes that are still pissy about it being an all-female cast of Ghostbusters or Ghostbusters reboot in general, or just that it's an all-female cast. What, 40-year-olds that haven't let go of something when they were 12, I Haven't let go of an orgasm? Ever? Is right. that what you're well, kind of, right? <laughs> Still virgins. <laughs> right. Well, you're insinuating even more. Like, these guys just don't know that life happens right. uh, in reality. Yeah. So mm. it's just people are jerks. But the like you failure said. Failure to adapt. Let's focus on the happy or the fact yeah. that they did it and they brightened some lives and some days. And uh, just real quick, this is the last piece of nerdy news here. It's just a little announcement for you Pittsburgh folks that um, Steel City Con is happening this weekend, August 7th through 9th. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, you should do so now. They are going to have like a plethora of awesome guests this year. Uh, looks like Ralph Macchio is going to be there from Karate Kid. I think the whole Karate Kid crew, actually. Um, William Zabka, the guy who was there... Um, Sensei, <laughs> I forget his name. Um, Tom Savini, who I feel like he's always there. Martin Cove, that's his name. Um, we are blocks away from Savini. I know. And um, Nichelle Nichols, Le- 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 Captain Lahura. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's going to be there. Where is she going to be? She's going to be at Steel City Con in Monroeville at Monroeville Convention Center. I think she'd sign the back of my shorts or my shirt. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I had a crush on her. Oh, I'm sure you did. I'm sure a lot of people do. A lot of dudes did. She was pretty hot, and she looks really well for her age, too. And also, oddly enough, Debbie Gibson is going to be there at Steel City Con. You know, the singer out of the blue you're kidding me uh, no i'm not i don't no. i don't so basically it's going to be like an 80s flashback so if you miss the 80s and all your pop all your pop tastic adventures you should go check it out um go to steelcitycon.com and get your tickets they're just 20 bucks a day or 40 dollars, i believe for the whole weekend um, so yeah, that is all the nerdy news I have today. If you have some questions or if you have nerdy news for us, please post something on the Down to Watch Facebook page or tweet us at DTW Podcast, or you can send an email, uh, down to watch podcast at gmail.com. Are you ready to get into Return of the Titans? Return, remember the Titans, Return of the Titans. Remember the Titans. You ready, D? I'll give you the opportunity to just redo that whole bit. What whole bit? The, the, I tripped you up this whole time. We could just cut. No, I'm fine know. with it. Strength. <laughs> I like that. This was very. This was, a, this was a jazz cast. Well, basically, <laughs> it's if I obsess too much about it, I will never get it done. I hear you. So I'm not trying to do. Remember all that. the Titans? It came out in the year 2000. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder what was going on in the world sometimes 2000 because I was obsessed at the time with just getting to school. And <laughs> oh, getting what a was job. going on? You're asking like <laughs> really like seriously, guys, what, like, was, what happening was happening in the year 2000 the world around me? Because I was, I was just kidding. Oh, well, if you'd like to finish reading, uh, telling us who the director and writer were, I can do a quick Google I search. I bet I could over... do that. I could do that for sure. It was great. Ryan Hurst was in it from. Oh, uh, just Sons- let's get into the d- director and, and writer first. Give them their shout outs. Okay. Oh, well, I was just killing time while I looked at <laughs> <laughs> The director was uh, Boaz Yakin. The writer, Gregory Allen Howard. 
the writer. Um, let's see what else he's done. He also did the Muhammad Ali starring Will Smith. Oh, which really? Is also very cool. He did that in 2001. He was having a great time in the year 2000. He probably knew he had time to read the paper. Mm. <laughs> he was doing great. Yeah, those are both great movies. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so to answer... Born in 1962. He's from Virginia. (laughs) Okay, to answer your question about what was going on in the year 2000, well, it looks like um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire started. The the reality show Survivor started. (laughs) Um, 2000 was the year that MP3s, that digital music started. Um, Napster came into play then. Harry Potter, Pottermania started in 2000. Oh wow! Right on. Um, yeah, so scooters were a big deal. DVDs started to com- have their comeuppance, and um, the internet started to really take off. Uh, it's also the year that Alien Gonza- Alien Gonzalez. Remember that young gentleman who was uh, I think he was a an American or Cuban American it was a custody battle between him and his mother oh, his yeah. father and his mother yeah, yeah yeah they were trying to get him back over here to America or something from Cuba oh wow and yeah. I think I just saw something recently um, about him coming back to America like, he's all grown now of course but so yeah but <sighs> that was what well, that's what was going on in the year 2000 gotcha well uh, Boaz Yenkin the director mm-hmm. also did Safe that John Statham flick that what's flick? John Statham. Am I saying his name right? Oh, Jason Statham. Ah, no, I am not. <sighs> Jason. Yeah. Uh, which I, I like that one. And now you see me, now you don't. Nah. Prince of Persia. Nah. And Titans. I never saw Prince of Persia. He's uh, he's a well-rounded, I guess. Okay. He's well, Remember the Titans is a Disney film, and it's a true story of a newly appointed African-American coach and his high school team on their first season as, as a racially integrated unit. This movie stars a lot of people. There are a lot of really like young, yeah. up-and-coming actors in this movie. I mean, of course, stars Denzel Washington. He um, is Coach Boone. Yes. And then there's Will Patton, who is Coach Yost. Wood Harris, who most folks will know as Avon Barker from The Wire. Avon, right. Um, there's also Ryan Hurst, a very young, very unbearded, very clean cut Ryan Hurst. Yeah. <laughs> um, Donald Faison, Ethan Suppley. I always want to call him Slurpee. <laughs> it was the, he's the big dude, like the really big. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and uh, Hayden, a very teeny tiny Hayden Pan. Panitarian, Panitarian, I don't know how to say this girl's last name, but the cheerleader Panettier. from Heroes. The cheerleader from Heroes. And I guess she's on Hayden Nashville now. Panettiere. Yeah, if I, I, she was my favorite. She's And of she's course, my favorite character. a very young Ryan Gosling. Yeah. And he danced, just like when he was on The Masketeers. We'll get there. Okay. Um, and, okay, so our personal history with the movie. I personally thought that I had seen this movie before, but after, as I was watching it, I, none of it seemed familiar at all, so I don't. I guess I have not seen it before. What about you, D? I had not seen it before. All right, all right, cool. So I guess we can get into uh, character slash actor breakdowns. I didn't have time to go to the movies. I didn't even know what was going on in the world. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Right. I think the only movie I saw around that time was Amistad. Give us three. Yeah. Of course, you went to the to the movie theater to see. And I went directly to the law <laughs> library afterwards and looked up the case and like spent all night there looking up cases. Oh my goodness! Related to it. Okay, so um, yeah, so basically, I mean, do we, do you want to talk about the movie in itself, or do you want to talk about you want to give character slash actor breakdowns? Oh, I just I, I, let's do the character actor breakdowns because that's okay. So, like I said, Denzel Washington plays Coach Boone. And um, he is the new hotness in town. Basically, this school, and I forget the name of the school, they are integrating for the first time. This takes place in Virginia in 1971. And um, the school is integrating for the first time, and they have... They were the Titans. The Titans. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Remember? (laughs) And um, so Denzel Washington comes in, and 
on to Will Patton's turf. He is the head coach at this high school. Will Patton plays coach Bill Yost. And um, so in bringing in and integrating these schools, they bring in Denzel Washington to be the new head coach. In 1971. And a lot of people aren't happy with it. They're not having it. Hayden Panitarian plays Will Pat plays Bill Yost's daughter at age nine, and she's very... Very energetic. We're, we'll, yeah. get, we'll get to her. And Yost was like, like, and and beloved. Yeah, everyone loved him. He was like a Hall of Fame nominee, potential on the short list kind of thing. Right. Like everybody loved him. So you know, Denzel, in my opinion, you know, the breakdown of and Coach Boone is a very hard nose black man, proud, and he is not trying to take anybody's stuff like to he, be successful right. in 1971 in that position that's how you probably had to be. exactly and he was like hardcore about it he was he had his ways of doing things and he showed you a little bit behind the curtain stupid. sometimes but he also showed you the nightmare behind the curtain at the same exactly time. only if you thought that he deserved that if, did you deserved it right so right. um so denzel i think he did a great job in this role oh yeah he was <laughs> awesome i'm surprised the Denzel's the best actor in the world. They haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> Guys, they're going slipping. in alphabetical order. Homework. How do we give them homework assignments? Don't we they can't. Accept? They're going in alphabetical order of Denzel Washington's filmography. <sighs> okay. So they haven't so, gotten to the R's yet. Correct. So they haven't gotten to training day yet. No. Okay. I can respect that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're not here to talk about their podcast. We are here. Let's move on to Will Patton, Bill Yost, Coach Yost. Any thoughts on him? That actor, I was going to ask you, because you know everything. What else has he been in? Well, he looks, he's got a real familiar I'm pretty sure he's, he was in Armageddon. He's one of those actors that's been in, like, everything. I thought he was Charles Grodin, but then I'm like, that's definitely not Charles Grodin. Yeah, he was in The Punisher in 2004. I don't know. He needs to change his profile <laughs> pic on the web. What is that hat? So anyway, on? so Coach Yost. Come on, Yost. Like you said, he was beloved. <laughs> Hello. Uh, like he was beloved. He was the beloved head coach. He, he was a good dude. He was a good man given his circumstances, too. Mm-hmm. Like he knew his place. Okay. So moving on to Wood Harris, who plays Julius Campbell. He is like um, his Avon Barker from the from The Wire. Okay. And I'm not saying that. Is it Barker or is it Baker? I haven't gotten to him yet. You know, freaking racist page. He's like third on the IMDb page. I need to get on that. There you are. Okay. <clears throat> I just don't know how to use my phone. I'm sorry, phone. I called Barksdale. Avon Barksdale. Man. <clears throat> okay, so moving on to Wood Harris, um, who, plays, who played Avon Barksdale on The Wire. He plays Julius Campbell, who is like I guess the he's coming in he's coming in from the black high school essentially, but I guess he's used to I don't know if he was a captain of his football team over there or something or I don't know because he's kind of because he's kind of calling the shots basically from Jump Street and he's already got his own I, he's he's got his own plan in place as to what how he wants to do it he wants to play football that's all he wants to do and he doesn't really care about the t- teamwork or family or anything like that so he becomes like you know he's the the main one that needs to be changed and then his counterpart is ryan hurst who plays jerry bertier bertier who on his side he is the captain of the white high school football team and he is definitely not about this integration and he doesn't want them coming in he doesn't he leads the rally to not take any sort of orders from Denzel really yeah like there's a scene where they're all going to camp uh football camp and they're all getting on the bus at first and then uh Jerry comes along with his little sidekick whatever his name was and he's like you know we're not doing this and we're not doing that and Denzel's like oh and he's like makes a mockery of him calls them Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin go I'm Gary Bertier, the only All-American you've got on this team. You want any of us to play for you, you reserve half the open positions for Hammond players. 
Half the offense, half the special teams. We don't need any of your people on defense. We're already set. Uh-huh. Don't need none of my people. Mm hmm What do you say your name was uh, Jerry? Gary. No, you must have said Jerry like Lewis, which would make you Dean Martin, right? Which folks? Gary. Parents, are they here? Where are they? That's my mother. That's your mama? Mm-hmm. Very nice, I want you. Take a good look at her. Because once you get on that bus, you ain't got no mama no more. You got your brothers on the team, and you got your daddy. Now, you know who your daddy is, don't you? Gary, if you want to play on this football team, you answer me when I ask you, who is your daddy? Who's your daddy, Gary? Who's your daddy? You. Uh-huh. And whose team is this? Is this your team? Or is this your daddy's team? Yours. Mm-hmm. Get on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Denzel. That was Coach Boone making his point, like making an example out of the loudest mouth very early on before they even went off to camp. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, so that was, that's Ryan Hurst. And then we... Is that Donald Faison? Was it Petey Jones that he did that Yeah, to? no. No, he did that to Ryan Hurst. Oh, he did? Okay, Ryan Hurst. Yeah, he was the like the main ringleader on gotcha. the white side, saying that they were all trying to say, well, we're not going to play for him. We're going to quit football if you don't coach anymore, if you're not our coach anymore. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, like, I mean, everybody else has pretty decent roles and characters, and they offer a lot to the script and to the story, like Donald Faison and... Ethan Supley, Craig Kirkwood, Kip Pardue, who comes in out of nowhere. Um, and then I, I guess the next notable character would be Hayden Panettiere, who plays Cheryl Yost, which is Coach Yost's... Panettiere. <laughs> which is Coach Yost's <laughs> nine-year-old daughter, who is a freak for football. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> definitely a made-up character. Two-dimensional. But she played her role very well. Not a made-up character. Was he, is well, you know what I mean? Like, the way that they portrayed it. Her I obsession guess. with football. I mean, I'm oh, sure yeah. she had a help. Have you, 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 you live in Pittsburgh, right? You, you've seen these people. These people exist, but they're usually in grown Drunk men's. Men. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Two-dimensional. I maintain my argument. <laughs> Two-dimensional. But played very well. Mm-hmm. Yes, and it just, I don't know. She was getting on my nerves after a while, though. It just seemed a bit much. But then again, I don't understand football. And I was trying to, I guess it was a difficulty. I was having difficulties wrapping my brain around a nine-year-old understanding that much. I'm sure she made perfect damn sense to I'm those sure. that do. Yeah, because... <laughs> That's all I got to say about football. I had <laughs> nothing. I got nothing. And, of course, you know, and even Kate Bosworth makes a little appearance. She's... Jerry Ryan Hurst's girlfriend, who's like maybe got two or three minutes on the on screen, oh, yeah. and also Nicole Ari Parker is Boone's wife. She has very little to say throughout the entire screen. Yeah, and his daughter, whoever played his daughter, she was great. <laughs> she was sassy. Page. Um, I don't see her listed here, but uh, and then you know, of course, Ryan Gosling, who probably had four lines to say the entire film. So this is clearly not Ryan's movie. This no. was Denzel's movie. Right, that's how I forgot. <laughs> You're like, let's do a podcast about Remember the Titans. <laughs> so yes, we are talking about, it's just, I mean, it's a twofer. It's we're, a we're, twofer, totally. I have no nothing but jealousy for Ryan Gosling. <laughs> nothing but jealousy. That's why I had to make my own meme. Okay, so <laughs> you have... <laughs> You have stated that, you know, Cheryl or Hayden's character was your favorite character in this film. Yeah. I don't know if I had a favorite character. Maybe it was Ethan Supley because he was just like. Oh, you he know, was great, too. He, he sang. Right. He's he, a little heart out. He rolls Jim in. Like. Yeah. You know, they're still like doing the se se segregation thing within the integrated school because, you know people hate change and um so you know he rolls in he's new to the school entirely but he's like totally comfortable chilling with the black dudes and he's trying to be accepted by them and they're trying to figure him out but he's just like no pretenses he just wants to play football he's like they said 
football and I came a running and he's like singing and making a fool of himself throughout the whole thing and he doesn't feel like he he feels like he's just poor white trash and doesn't think he's gonna ever make it to college he didn't want anybody to hit his lunch tray out of his hand again when he was little oh but now he's big is that what what, I I missed that I must have missed that scene I I made that up okay scene happened in my head so yeah Ethan Supley was a very um boisterous character which I enjoyed and so you know this goes on this is a a typical Disney film it's a you know got some problems in the beginning we learn how to work it out right and then you know song and victory dance. ensues um so there's like song and dance there's a lot of football in here you know because these boys are at each other's throats from jump street you know from be- them from the beginning where they get on the bus to go to camp um Coach Boone sees that there's going to be problems, so he decides to switch them up. He insta- he integrates them on the bus because they start they try to take separate buses. They try to take blacks oh, on really? one bus, whites on the other, and he's like, "Nope, this is how we're going to do it." And I want there's a black and a white sharing a seat together, and then you're going to this is going to be a roommate at camp. And he also came across he also made these rules of making them learn something about their roommate. So he wanted them to learn something. Then he wanted them to spread out and learn something about each other. And if they didn't do that, if they didn't talk to each other and learn anything about each other, then he was, you know, punched them with whatever burpees or I don't know what <laughs> these exercise. Burpees? I don't know the suicides or I don't know drop the squats when you go when you go down and kick your legs back. I don't know with up. some punishing exercise okay. and that look like like you drop to the ground and then you do like a push up and then you just jump yeah. up mm-hmm. okay so yeah so um that's how he made them all learn he called about them each burpees other. no the i movie? called them burpees oh. just because that's the first exercise <laughs> that's term what they that, called them when you grew that's up. the first exercise term that came to my head just now <laughs> burping is an exercise <laughs> no i know there's a burpee there is an exercise or something called a burpee i swear there is i'll let you have that i'm going to google it right now <laughs> because i'm not gonna have you look at me in that condescending way i'm not looking at you condescending. <laughs> this is love uh, mm. number three burpee exercise routine the simple burpee workout routine mm. muscle and fitness magazine yeah it's in like begin in a standing position drop down in a squat position i don't know it's a bunch of stuff that looks horrifying drop and squat yeah, I was right. Drop, squat, and pop, I think is what we called it. Drop, squat, and pop. We're very literal in Kansas. Apparently. Drop, squat, and pop, people. So anyway, um, so yeah, so that's how he made them learn about each other. And I guess they did separate the teams by, they worked it out so Yost would be his assistant coach or he would coach with alongside with him. And Yost had the defensive side, and Boone had the offense. Yeah, just two different coaches. There's a defense. Is that coach usually how it works? And an offense coach. Really? Mm-hmm. Why is that? Well, I mean, I guess it's two different it's strategies. A lot to study. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing your job right, it's a lot to cover <laughs> both ground. Yeah, I guess so. It just seemed weird. To, I mean, I don't know. okay. Different uh, tactics as well. Right. No, true. Different parts of your brain. So in all of this, um, the boys learn about themselves. The boys learn about each other. They they play good uh, football. Yeah, they then play there's darn good football. There's people. a lot of montages of them. Oh, so working many montages. <laughs> there's a montage of them That's learning about Disney each other. Hallmark, right, right. There's a nut montage of them Growing. working it out. There's a montage about them <laughs> winning a game together. There's Victory. a montage. Yes, it's just. <laughs> Montage after montage after montage. There was probably about six School. total. <laughs> Don't forget, it's all Lunch. about things that ma- magic that happens at school. The only thing that was missing was a Tinkerbell coming through with the waving that's a magical what, that's wand. That's Hayden. Panettiere. Panettiere. Panty raid. Panettiere. <laughs> Panting dog. Oh, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I don't. It's not not to say that she's a panting dog. I'm sure she's a lovely young lady. Um, it's just a very difficult name for she's me. She's the say. most anticipated cheerleader on TV in my lifetime. The most anticipated. What does that mean? Heroes. I know where you're talking about, but why is she the mo- your most anticipated? The world's most anticipated. Okay. So there was this one Trailers. scene. 
Oh, oh, save the cheerleader. Yeah. Okay. So there was this one scene that I felt there was a lot happening in it. And even after the fact, we didn't get any full explanation on it. So what this is one scene that stood out to me. Um, I don't know if they just won a game or if it was a scrimmage or whatever. I don't know. Something happens during a scrimmage. Is that a word? Is that yeah, a word? sure. It's a practice game. Okay. That bonds Gary and Julius. At that point, they become friends. I don't know football so i don't know what happened and why it seemed they started hitting each other there was a point one of them said left side and hit the other and then the other one said something else and hit him and probably they, right side no it wasn't right side which i thought yeah that would make sense you really stuck him campbell yeah i love me a little contact beady this is left side I don't understand it. So if anybody out there can explain to me what that all means. But that was the moment that that bonded Gary and Julius and they became besties at that point. And so <laughs> that's the part you're you got. That's yeah, I got that 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 was the moment of the icebreaker. But what comes after that there's a scene in the locker room where um the black boys start playing the dozens oh, okay. with each other. And then they decide to let to join Gary into the phone. Like, yo mama. Uh-huh. And he starts to take offense. He's like, really? He's like, what did you say? <laughs> hey, but hey, hey, I like them better with the long hair, bro. Remind me of Bertier's mama. Oh, 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 oh. Why do you know what Bertier's mama looks like? Brother, don't you know me and Bertier's mama? Went out on the town last night. <laughs> what are you oh, talking about? Now, 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 listen, now, Blue. Why are you talking about Bertie and Mama like that? See, now you're making me angry, man. Look like I ain't gonna be able to take your mama to the prom. No <laughs> what you laughing at, Jerry Buck? You need to tell your mama to shave them old legs of hers, bro. And Julius, when she's done, maybe your mama can borrow the razor and shave that old nasty back of hers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Because you look like a wolf man, bro. Hey, hey. Little elastic, man. What, what happened to you? Man, I just gave your mom a piggyback ride and she weighs twice as much. Oh, right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a mama joke. And, <laughs> and they're all going back and forth and doing this. And then, you know, somebody starts to sing Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And they all start dancing and singing around together. And then the kid named Ronnie, a.k.a. they call him Sunshine, he comes on to Gary and kisses him. And then Gary punches him because he doesn't know what's happening. And I don't understand. Like, all this is going on with, like, within seven minutes, like a seven-minute um, scene and I don't understand. They never address it again, really. If that kid was gay, if he was just messing with him. You or... know what, honey? We saw the ones with deleted scenes. We Cause... didn't watch. There it's... were deleted scenes? Yeah. It says it six... includes six deleted scenes. Maybe that was in there. That... I mean, I they're... wonder. They did I'm come. Just... I'm sorry to say because it should have been in there. Well, if there was Disney something. was keeping it real. Right. There was something else that happened where um, De- Donald Faison asks him later. He's like, you know. I don't care, but I just have to know. Are you? Oh, are that's you gay? what that was about. Yeah, yeah okay. But that he never answered that. it either way, and they just never talked about it again, one right. way or the other. It's so just like the, and then they settled it with he was just a hippie. I guess, or from California. That's what. Yeah, it was <laughs> California. That's why <laughs> yes. they're throwing around. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so they're like trying to start a thing. Right. Propaganda. <laughs> why did Disney hate on California like that? I don't know. That's, that's right. That is... Ooh, well, there's the world's that, at, right? Or land? One of them. One of them. There's Not California and Florida. Boys and Berry Farms. What's Boys and Berry Farms? It's a, like a Kennywood with Boys and Berry theme. So it's like For you real. ride giant and then Boys have, and Berries? And then have pie. 
Mm-hmm. And then there's pie afterwards. Yeah, yeah I think, <laughs> I, the one amusement park in the world I never got lost at. <laughs> He's at the pie stand. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. He's a jam. Like, is this all free? <laughs> like, no, where is Paris? <laughs> <laughs> Could the owner of this young boy covered in boysenberry strawberry and blueberry jam please come <laughs> dig him up? Right, He's running time. in circles. <laughs> He's lost his fedora. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so, you know, they become friends. Everybody's happy, and um, they learn a new chant of mobile, agile, hostile. (laughs) And then it's time to go back to school and where the integration troubles begin. And not everybody's happy. There's picketing, you know, how that goes. And um, the boys are finding it difficult because it was like they were in their own little world while they're they're safe at camp and now they have to come back and deal with everybody else's prejudices even though they've learned how to look past it and to be humans about the situation and so now they're coming back home to dealing with their friends and their families not wanting to accept their newfound knowledge and so yes and this is like you know one of the prime examples of race being taught and not (laughs) <laughs> you know or racism being taught right and because you know gary is like ready to be bff with julius but his mother doesn't want him to go off and play basketball with him she or doesn't even in the house right she doesn't want him in the house Jeez. gary's girlfriend gives him shit for uh, hanging out with him and she decides to break up with him and she doesn't even shake julius's hand when he introduces her to him she's just a real right she's a real piece of work yeah Although when Julius does meet her finally, and he was nervous about meeting her. Oh, it was so... Just, t- the way he just stood scene. out in front of the house for like 20 minutes yeah. before he went in there. The scene where he like, quite, when they finally, we finally get to the point where Julius is allowed there for dinner and he comes, he's crossing the street and then a a cop pulls up on him and he's like, you can tell he's nervous because I mean, 1971, shit, 2015, a white cop pulls up on a black man. They're gonna, there's going to be some there's going to be some nerves. Right. And so, you know, the cop... They are well displayed. Yeah. So he was nervous, understandably so, but the cop just congratulated him on a good football game. Because, you know, one more example of how racists don't care really about the color as long as you're playing that game for them, boy. Yeah, right. (laughs) True that. (laughs) All right, so long as you keep throwing quarterbacks, <laughs> right, or throwing touchdowns, or crushing throwing quarterbacks, quarter, crushing quarterbacks. We are not touchdowns. a football family. Yeah. Just <laughs> do they use a badminton? <laughs> that would be great. Throw balls, make scores, yay! So, yeah, so like we said, uh, Julius comes to the house and he's super nice, and he just like opens, he just hugs Gary's mom, his big bear hug, and picks her up, and it's just the sweetest thing. And there's more montages, and. You know, then tragedy strikes where Gary gets in a car accident and lands himself in the hospital because he's paralyzed from the waist down. Right, because he's out there being proud. Right. And I'm glad it wasn't because some racist organization, like, made an example of him. Right, yeah. But the silent subtext there is that accidents happen. That was the hand of God punishing the guy that supported That befriended the coloreds? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I'm amazed that Kip Pardue got in, got in there. Who was the guy that played Sunshine? Sunshine, and I just I have to say that that was actually a pretty. I mean, for 2000, the year 2000, mm-hmm. maybe that had something to do with a foreshadowing of the world we're in today. Mm-hmm. Just about this is, happens in high school. The guy. Um, what happens in high school? Oh, like you know, p- boys find their sexuality, girls find their sexuality. Gotcha. Get stigmatized. Right. You know, turn something that's as stupid as like cocoa puffs or California or some arbitrary word all of a sudden means something. <laughs> right. You know, like <laughs> like that kind of. Oh, he's California. Right. Right. Or you know, he, he <laughs> no, he's really California. <laughs> oh, Jimmy doesn't tie his shoes. Oh, you know, let me see you tie your shoes. Oh, he's gay. <laughs> let me see. You. Look at your nails. <laughs> That's one you probably yes. are more familiar with. Yes. I think you tried that on me once. No, I did not. Mm, that was you, you told me your friend. Your friend did that to you. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the trans sisters yes. did that to all of us. <laughs> 
So are you looking up something of importance right I now? I was or? looking up Kip Pardue. I wanted to know his name. He did a great job. You know, the other thing, too, later when they're on the field. In his Yamaste. And and uh, they're trying to figure out how to get this one defender who just crushed their last quarterback. He's like, throw me, put me in his quarterback. I'll get this guy. He's like, let him through. And I don't he, understand what you're talking about. What was okay. the quarterback? Sunshine played quarterback. In oh, oh are you flipped, talking about his revenge? Where he flipped the guy over, yes. the defensive player over. That's yes. what I'm talking about. Yes. Yes. That was glorious. And the guy that was the actor, I can't remember his name. But, uh, more honestly, I can't look up on my phone two things at once. The one who got hurt? The one who got hurt. Um, that was Rev was the character's name. Okay, so Rev was the one that had the issue with Sunshine at the lunchroom table. I just got to know, are you or aren't you? No, it okay. wasn't. It no? was Donald Faison. Oh, was it? Mm-hmm. Ah. He was the one who, and because he, he was his Scrub roommate. Me. Scrub me. <laughs> 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 yes, because Donald played his roommate. He was his roommate. Uh, okay. there, and um, Rev was Slurpee's roommate. <laughs> now you're gaying it up. <laughs> so, I just got a cut. Just... No, it's just, it just seems really refreshing. He should really see about getting some sponsorship from 7-Eleven. <laughs> right? Get some sort of deal like with the that. the most <laughs> correct everybody out there. Like, right. This is how you say my name now. Right. I'm not Slurpee. I'm you're sl- going to pay me wait. to tell the world. Because exactly. I, People are getting mileage out of your Slurpees. Plus, you're a Slurpee fan anyway. It's on your brain. Anyway, I could be making you eggs with cheese and you'd you be know like a Slurpee. Go with with <laughs> 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 Movies don't really happen without Slurpees, do they? No, not so, at all. B&B, we should get some sponsorship. Truth. Slurpee okay, I see life. Slurpee, the little hush puppy people, whatever that is, you know, a little cool hush puppy dog that's chilling next to us, an icy. Yeah. Get at us. We, we would love some sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay, so we've moved on from all this jazz, and so now it's time to get into what did you think of the movie as a whole? Rate it from one to five. Well, five, six, maybe. This really? This is one of my the best movies I've seen really? in a long time. Yeah. Wow. I, I got Terry in a couple places, mm. and that doesn't, I mean, okay, so it's true, School of Rock. It's an education movie. Education movies get me every time. <laughs> I love ed- the education movies. I can, you know, I wasn't hating on Disney as I was picking out everything that was essential to them, but at the same time, you know, it was a good use of non-animated time. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it was a great, great cast. I mean, just thick with talent, deep mm. bench. You know, I mean, there were no small parts. Everybody nailed their part, and. And there was there for a good reason, too. Like, each one offered something really nice. Oh, yeah. Really really important. This is how you make a movie, people. Right? That's what I got to say. Well, I'm going to give it a four, only because I didn't think it was necessary. The um, funeral scene at the beginning, it starts off with them going to Gary's funeral. Oh, really? Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah, and then, well, it, but they don't they, tell you whose funeral that they're going to. They just you just see everybody arriving at this funeral, okay. and then it ends okay. with I Gary's see, funeral. I can, I can see that. But I I feel like it was unnecessary because the story that they were telling ended with him in the hospital with them winning. Right. So like you know he didn't die until like. Yeah, it was weird. Several at the years end, there after, the, like ten years yeah. after the fact, or something, and so yeah. So at the end, Sam Elliott comes on. <laughs> well, folks, this is the story about a football team that we all never forgot. <laughs> then Gary died. Here we all are throwing in our last bit of dirt, and childhood, innocence, people. You know, I mean, it was strange. So See if what it started those out that boys way, right? right, right <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> they were never meaning no harm. <laughs> Straightening the curves, bending the rules. Like the freeze frame shot of everybody at the at the funeral, like tossing dirt on them. So, okay, this is what I have to say in defense of that. Any after that huge mockery, okay, is you have to consider the audience. So, if they're selling this as an education film under the Disney brand, and I think I just, you're selling it as an education film. I am. But see, you put the Disney brand on a non-animated flick. Mm-hmm. To me, that usually means they're they're trying to get bought by schools. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but to think about these things. I live in a capitalistic world. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, so they're thinking that they're probably going to get it's a film about high school age kids. So they'll get high school age kids in there. Mm-hmm. Volatile group, right? 
I mean, from seventh grade on, we're all crazy, really, right. until, I don't know, we have either a major 40? accident or 40. <laughs> 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 One of those two. <laughs> then, we, then we grows up. Yes. <laughs> so nonetheless, um, I think they knew they wanted some kind of a rating probably, at the very least, like a PG. Mm-hmm. Is that what this is? It's PG. Yeah. Yes, so it's PG. Actually, fun fact about that. The script had a lot more uh, vulgar language, a lot more cursing in it, and Disney had to come back to Jerry Bruckheimer, the producer, like, uh, this is good, but can we tell- tone down on some of this? Right, we're not going for a, um, oh, what's his name? He made all the movies in the 80s. Um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Why can Breakfast I make- Club, John Hughes? Yeah. Whew. Wow. Right. <laughs> we just almost lost our religion. <laughs> In any event, um, so I think if you consider that they knew that there were going to be kids in the audience, they wanted to set you up and let you know somebody dies in the end. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't come as a huge heartbreaker killer, mood killer at the end. So it's yeah, like, everyone's like, get out of the theater, people, already. <laughs> the credits are done. You stop crying already. <laughs> You know they didn't want to old yeller us. Oh, yeah. They've had their they've they've got some experience points in getting people out of the theater, so they have to set you up and let you know somebody's going to die at the end. Mm-hmm. It's also such a great excuse for why you would want to tell this story again at this dude's funeral mm-hmm. because he went on to become like an Olympic athlete and champion, right? And this is based on a true story, so it's also really a story about Gary, right? And it and, keeps it microcosm, and also. That makes that's a very great point that you've just made. So I really wish now that you've pointed that out to me that they had done it like they were coming to of the funeral, and we started off with somebody addressing the attendees of the funeral, like they were they like they were actually telling the story and not they did some yeah, like yeah like Hayden yeah exactly but they did they did her voiceover <laughs> like instead. look America this white woman's got something to say and everybody would listen. <laughs> Yeah, it just should have been like, you know, they're they're I'm arriving sorry. at this funeral and, you know, she steps up to the podium and she starts to address the attendees. And instead, they're just there's like a slow mo of everybody coming up this greener this green hill. And she's we start with her voiceover over like, this is the story of blah, blah, blah. Or Julius could have handled yeah, this. So yeah. So it's just Started like with, who loved him and it was his best friend. Right. And they stayed friends the whole time. I know. Right. That would have been perfect. Yeah, so that's why I would I bring it down to the one. Okay, but you know, for me personally, the reason one. why I, and I'm not disagreeing with you. No, it's fine. I'm just saying, for me, when I you know the, I was quick to say this is the way movies should be made five, six, whatever, because mm-hmm. it hits my three good storytelling points, make mm-hmm. it micro, meza, and macro, so that it's like one person's story, mm-hmm. and then like kind of what's going on contextually in society, mm-hmm. and then. The mac, I guess maybe meza is more like what's going on in the community, and then macro is what's going on in society. Interesting. So those are your three personal points. Of Almost what make every a good movie great or? book, every in my every book that I love the most, there mm-hmm. any poem or song or anything mm-hmm. that, or poem. Did I say that twice? Maybe even photographs mm-hmm. have a micro, meza, and macro components to them. Interesting. So it's like a picture of that red shoe mm-hmm. against the blue wall. Mm-hmm. That has some street art on it. Interesting. Okay. With, I don't know, a plane flying in the back or something. <laughs> like you know. The news headlines. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, okay. No, I get it. All right. So, um, and now on the flip side, we're going to rate Ryan's performance one through five. Now, as I said, this is de- he's definitely not. This is not Ryan's movie. He probably has five lines of dialogue in this entire thing he's just kind of in the background for the most part and um so yeah like i don't know i guess a two a three just because like i mean we on gosling factor not on gosling factor we're gonna get to gosling factor in a moment after the break but just his performance in general one to five Oh, like I was, I guess three, like he did what he was supposed to do, but there was like, he wasn't too distracting. Sure. This was early, yeah, early in his career too. I was saying like, I could see the, I could see why they picked him mm. on. He still had a contract with Disney. No, I'm, three I'm levels. joking. Well, I don't know. probably because he was on the, <laughs> he was in Mouseketeers. Right. <clears throat> and Disney's job is to help those Mouseketeers make a life. Well, I mean, geez, you take their childhood away and put them to work. 
It's the least you can do. Is to make sure they're set for life, right. or at least give him every great opportunity. And putting him in this film, I hope, helped his career. I hope it did because, and he earned his place there. He didn't fall down on the job. Right. If I don't know what else he had done before this, uh, that that um, made might have made him a household name. Um, he was the young Hercules. Um, because there was dancing and singing, <clears throat> and they probably they put him in there to kind of legitimize. He was the only real dancer and singer with the resume in that crew. Yeah, he'd only done like a couple things cast. here or there, like maybe three or f- three small parts in movies and then like I- I'm pretty sure he was on a show called like either The Young Her- Her- Young Hercules or something like that. Yeah, so I think I mean, another Disney show. And he did his thing and he was cute as hell. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of posters went out after that. It was great. He danced, he sang, he did his part. And so what would you rate him? considering that it was early in his career i would i would say he he did a four okay um yeah i think you're right i'll agree with that four i'll boost it up to four just because you know there was definite talent there and it wasn't he just didn't fall into the background but then again he didn't overshadow anybody that he wasn't supposed to overshadow like i said in the beginning no everybody played their part there were no small parts everybody did a great job so are you down to watch it again yeah, oh, absolutely. And when we have children, we'll watch it with them and have a discussion afterwards during brunch. Yes, it was. I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back with the Ryan checklist. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now it's time to get into the Ryan checklist, and I don't have a a good name for us yet, but we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> the checklist. The checklist. It's like some sort of the the goose goose Gosling gauge. <laughs> what did I say before? Gosling factor. Yeah, Gosling factor. Yeah, because you know I think there's certain things that he puts into just about every film that he's in well i mean uh, you know you gave me like what was i for me in his career lars and the real girl is five <clears throat> you know so i have that to compare it to okay and he did do dancing and singing okay well this you don't even know what my checklist is yet okay does he sing or and or dance in this film <laughs> yes how many times does he i made notes <laughs> oh wow of how many times okay so i counted how many times he sang and or danced there is the first time at the lunch table i forget what they were singing but he was getting very jiggy with it (laughs) he was moving his shoulders and he was into it he didn't sing but he was dancing second time when they're doing the getting to know you montage of all the roommates getting to know each other he's showing his roommate he's letting his roommate listen to like one of his favorite songs which sounds like some country western thing and he's like doing a jig <laughs> like a country jig in his room and he's like can't you tell me there's nothing better than this or something like that really yes oh, shucks. <laughs> oh, shucks, y'all. Uh, three the locker scene when i was talking about they're singing ain't no mountain high enough he was really really into that one right, okay. <laughs> he was like dancing around all over the place uh four there was a bus ride i think that was coming back from camp and he was singing along in there they were all singing and five um the new team warm-up choreography <laughs> when they came out um, and they're doing their thing on the game at the game, and they're like, "Yeah, I have no idea what they were chanting, um, but that they were singing." But it was, um, yeah. So it was that, and he was on the front lines, like singing, like dancing along. So you know, they knew where to place the young musketeer in that one. So yes, it's definitely that's check check off that on the Gosling, Gosling, uh, Gosling gauge, Gosling factor, Gosling factor. Think about it. Yeah, we'll work on that. Let it simmer. That's number one. Two, is his character off-putting or eccentric? I don't... See, that's that's why I say Lars and the Real Girls of Five. That's the difference maker. Is, no, not at all. Nope. And that's a smart move for his first big movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was... Uh, yeah, I don't think that he would. It would have done well for him to like jump right into talented, cute, like vanilla that. flavored. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. That's what we do best here at Disney. Did he disappear? <laughs> Did he disappear into his character? 
Um, not no. it was. I think that's kind of non applicable because. Well, or no, no. I, I guess no, he's probably he did not dissolve it to his character. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess that's who he was coming off of Mouseketeers and just like the clips I've seen of him as a Mouseketeer. It's probably very spot on as to who he was. So, yeah, it's definitely not. All right. The character smug level. Zero smug. Yeah. Really? You think I, that I, country song thing was smug? All right. Well, there was a you lot, know, of, I a lot of, all of it. Yeah. Like you probably didn't even notice him in a lot of scenes because there was a lot of like he would do these faces or he does this the smug face and he would do it in the background and so i would give it like a three the level of smugness and there's just because he didn't really get to say any too much so but he did a lot of looks there was a lot of side eye okay in the background call it face acting yes and is his was this character sexually attractive no <laughs> Well, that's because you're a grown woman. <laughs> Imagine you're a 14 year old girl. Me at 14, I probably would have been more into Sunshine. <laughs> Every that's the funny thing about Sunshine's character. Every girl in the school was right. into Sunshine, <laughs> of course, right? Right. <laughs> like he's so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him do his yoga. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were all by the window drooling over. Yeah, exactly. So funny. <laughs> Love. And I can't think of anybody else that. Yeah, it probably would have been Sunshine. Would have been the only other person. I, I probably wouldn't even noticed Ryan at fourteen. Okay, <coughs> are you asking then this last question is... This is the last question. No, 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 the second to last question then. Uh-huh. The question you just asked yourself, is he sexy? Uh-huh. Your opinion is the only one that matters. No, I was asking you. Like, is opinions. <laughs> I'm saying I think 14-year-old girls uh-huh. in general who would be inclined to see this movie would, mm-hmm. would have thought he was sexy. And okay. They were aiming for that. Okay, so that was kids. your answer for that. Yeah, okay. I think they're aiming for the kids there. Okay. That was, I, like I said before, they're going for the PG rating. Yeah. They're thinking their audience. They're trying to make posters for Ryan Gosling. Right. I said. Yeah. That this earlier. is clearly this is clearly opinion. Yeah, so yeah. This is not. Yeah, yeah. So clearly, you know where I stand on this issue. <laughs> gotcha. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> Damn and <you> Ryan Gosling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that on the Ryan on the Gosling. What did we? I keep reading. Gosling factor. I have to write that down. It doesn't. It doesn't stick. It It doesn't stick. Okay, on Ryan's checklist. Um, So I also thought about perhaps adding this segment of the Bechtel test. What? Have you never heard of this Bechtel test? Spell it. Bechtel. B e c h d e l. No. This is um, a test. That's just kind of been being used and has been used in pop culture to see if a film um, to rate the level of female presence and quality of female presence in a film. Hmm. And there's just basically three factors to it. Um, does the film have at least two named women in it? Do the women talk to each other about something other than a man? Yes. Yeah, the two little girls. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep, <laughs> they were great. Like, again, those two were my favorite. That was my favorite uh, dynamic and characters were the two young girls. And I don't know who played, but Denzel's daughter. That sucks. I wish I knew because she was great. Yeah, she was, and I don't remember her name, the character's name. Um. Well, we did so say it several times. Nikki? Was it Nikki? Nikki, yeah. Okay, so Kristen Lee Jones played Nikki. And it doesn't look like she's really done too much of anything else. Um, she was in Aquila and the Bee and The Neighbor. Those That's are pretty... both great movies. I loved Aquila and the Bee. And The Neighbor. Didn't you like that? You made me watch it. I don't think it's the same neighbor you think. Oh, okay. It is it's something with Matthew Modine, The Neighbor 2007. Huh. Yeah, I don't know this movie. But yeah, so that's that. So yes, and it does pass the Bechtel test. So now uh, we are going to get into even the mo- there is the mother too. Um, she didn't talk to anybody. But I mean, Gary's mom. Did she? Yeah. But was it at the hospital about Gary? Probably. Huh, good hmm. point. 
It's a very interesting test once you start to really think about it. When you start, well, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm definitely it. thinking about it right now. I'm trying to apply it to other things. Right. It's like, what are what are they again? I'm sorry. Um, it has to have at least two named women. Okay. In the film, they have to talk to each other about something other than a man. Okay. And yeah. I almost thought that. Wow. Um, yeah, That's it's great. and I forget who it was started by a um. Bechtel. No, a woman. Yeah, I think that was her last name, like Alexis, maybe Bechtel, and she, she was a cartoonist, and she kind of put it in her cartoon as I forget why. Oh, I like um, it. Like I because think, Blondie. <laughs> well, I think the name of the cartoon was like. Or Betty Boop. No, it was like two. Or cats. Two angry dykes or something like that was the name of the. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like screwing this up completely, but I know that Dykes was in the title of it. <laughs> um, like in Dams? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Let's see if I can't find. Yeah, um, and there's also a web. There's a website called BechtelTest.com, and they have gone through like a ton, ton, ton of movies to see if they which ones uh, rate up to it, like which ones live up to that possible test. And there's also like other things um, that they talk about feminism in Hollywood is like other terms are a celluloid ceiling where they talk about how it's very difficult for women to advance in high level, like producer roles and whatnot in Hollywood. It's like a variation of the glass ceiling. Yeah. And it refers to women being statistically underrepresented in creative positions in Hollywood. And they also have like the celluloid ceiling report. And there's also the Smurfette principle. Have you heard of that one? Nope. Where basically, you know, they you get a movie with just a, nothing but dudes in it, and then you plop a girl in there just to make people happy. It's like, oh, there's a girl there. So <laughs> the Smurfette. Of, oh yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, like an ensemble cast <laughs> of. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, give me an example, and then it uh, was it. <laughs> it was his own example. Ray zips a loquitur, baby. The thing is what it is. Yep, speaks for itself. Okay, so now in closing, we will read from the good book of One Hundred Reasons to Love Ryan Gosling, mm-hmm. written by Joanne Benick. Hmm. Um, this is from London, hmm. so this is a. Uh, Read, you know, she, this, read it she with goes an English on to, accent, please. Okay. So this is the introduction of the Gospel of Ryan. The okay. Gospel. Get it? <laughs> oh, because the Gosling. Gosling. The Gospel. Number one. Being a musketeer didn't fuck him up. <laughs> nice. Number two. He taught Britney Spears about sex. Did he? Back when Brit was still a girl, not yet shaven head woman. <clears throat> <clears throat> blah blah blah. Uh, That's not an English accent. Sorry. <clears throat> In fact, he shared his knowledge with all the Musketeers. He just, I just told them what I heard, like positions and stuff. All the other mothers went to Disney and told them I was corrupting their kids. <laughs> Says Ryan. Number three, he's Herculean. His first acting job in the L.A. was the title role of a TV series called Young Hercules. You're great at this. <laughs> Number four, Backstreet Boycott. The Backstreet Boys asked Ryan to audition for the band, but he turned them down. Commit. You number lose there. Number, huh? <laughs> you started to lose your accent. Number already. five, and this is the last one I'm closing out on, he plays jazz guitar. Oh, does he know? Jazz. That's one little syllable that makes guitar sound so much deeper, moodier, and more desirable. Oh, yeah. Well, Ron Burgundy plays a jazz flute <laughs> like magic fire. <laughs> if you would like to check out the uh, other 95 reasons to love Ryan Gosling, you should uh, go to Amazon.com and pick up Joanna Benick's book, B-E-N-E-C-K-E, 100 Reasons to Love Ryan Gosling. So we are going to wrap on this Down to Watch episode covering Remember the Titans, this um, special Ryan Gosling edition. Um, subscribe to us on iTunes, please. Down to Watch podcast on facebook like us you can follow us on twitter dtw podcast we're also on soundcloud follow us rate us review us do all the things um just like us please like us these rates and reviews really help us out and uh write to us you know post stuff and whatnot you have something to say d i have a question okay was i being have <laughs>
Yes, you're being hafe. Sweet. You're, you're off probation. <laughs> so, and also, um, you know, while you're following us and liking us and all that jazz, let us know what you think of Remember the Titans. We'd be interested to know your thoughts. And, you know, is this something that you never watched before or is it something you watch every year to get you pumped for football season? I don't know what you people do. But otherwise, uh, I guess, you know, until next time. <laughs> This has been a Rugged Angel production.